Okay, before you watch what you're about to watch, there was something I left out. And I just want to briefly bring it up here. <clears throat> Despite what you're going to hear in this review about everything that I talk about, there's one person I wanted to bring up that I really, really liked in the new Dune movie that I completely forgot to talk about. And that is Jason Momoa. I thought Jason Momoa was the most awesome character as Duncan Idaho in the new Dune movie. Because uh, you're going to hear a lot of stuff, but I wanted to make sure that I, I bring up Jason Momoa really wowed me as Duncan Idaho, my favorite character in this version of Dune. Enjoy the rest of the video. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Rob, and we are very late in talking about this. This happened, this came out around the same time as my walk away from my channel to figure some things out. And it's really unfortunate because I really had a lot to say at the time, and maybe it would have been fine on my channel and done all right, but I still, despite coming away from it and uh, coming back, I still need, we need to talk about Dune. We need to talk about the brand new Dune that came out in October. Because for me, it was a pretty big deal. Um, not like it's a big deal to long time fans of the books. Long time fans, people waiting to see if there's a better version than the David Lynch version of the, of the movie. You know the adaptation of that um, because I've heard that even David Lynch kind of disavows himself of that film but for me the anticipation was I was finally going to read Dune we had been talking about it a little bit there had been you know from the hype around the movie because it was supposed to come out last year blah 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 like who, who doesn't know that um, but I'd never read it I'd seen the David Lynch movie once back in the 80s when it first came out and I was young and I remembered only certain things. They were important things though and they're, they're going to come up, to, they're going to turn out to be important still. Um, I remember Sting. I remember the Baron. I remember the Sandworms. I remember the feel of it. I don't really, I didn't really remember Kyle MacLachlan or any of the other people but I remember the villains. And I remember the giant worms. And there's a reason for that. So years later, never read the books, right? It's their classics. Sci-fi fans, a lot of sci-fi fans love them. They are highly regarded amongst many people. I always thought of it as like, I, I don't remember that much other than the villains and some of the, the, the effects from the original. But I always thought like, I don't know if I want to read a book about a desert planet. It sounds, for me, uh, sounds really boring. How do you make this exciting? Because if, it, if I remembered more about the original David Lynch film, maybe I'd want to read it more. That's kind of how I felt. But the new one was going to come out, and it was directed by somebody that I really liked, and I really loved Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner 2049 is, is one of the, my favorite movies of the last 20 years. I love it. I like it more than the original, and maybe that's sacrilegious to some people, but I loved what they did with 2049. And so I was really excited for this because I was like, wow, okay, this director, and I'm going to butcher the, the reason I'm not saying the name is because I always butcher the last name, but Denny, I'm just going to say the first name like we know each other. Uh, I was like, oh, if anybody can do Dune, it's that person. If they could do what they did with 2049, they can totally kill it with Dune. And while I don't watch many trailers, I watch Dune's trailer. And I was like, okay, this is, w and this is back when it was supposed to come out. I was ready. And so this year, on my birthday, one of my wonderful subs got me the book for my birthday. 
and over the course of the end of July through August, I read that. And it was kind of a, a group thing. There were there were two people at my job reading it at the same time. There were uh, me and my sub were the sub that got it for me were reading it. There was several people reading it around that time, and I think there was probably a lot of people reading Dune or catch you know for the first time or rereading it for like the millionth time. And I loved the book. I was completely wrong at how I felt about it. I loved. Every second of Dune. That book is amazing. I am so glad to be proven wrong. I'm so glad that this book showed me that a desert planet and all the people that are in this book and the characters, they I fell in love with these characters. From the top down, I loved everybody. And the one, even the ones I loved to hate, like the Baron, and I loved it. I was so caught up in the drama of this world and the characters and all the intrigue. It was so great. I felt these characters were so alive. And it gave me, to for me, one of my favorite female characters of all time. And Jessica played in the movie here by Rebecca Ferguson. And so I was like, oh, God, they've got Rebecca Ferguson playing Jessica, one of the most badass characters in any book I've ever read. And I've read a lot of books. I might I might not have tons of books sitting around here, but I got books. <laughs> I got books. I can prove it to you. I'll turn, I'll pause it and show you my bookshelf. So I was excited. And then after reading the book, we decided we were gonna watch the David Lynch film as a group. And so we watched Dune by David Lynch, the first time I'd seen it since the 80s. And while I didn't love it I remembered why I remembered Sting and why I remembered the Baron and and I I was like wow is because the disgustingness of the Baron in David Lynch's film is just burned was burned into my memory from all these years didn't remember the actor who played him but I remembered him and I remember Sting I will kill you it they were memorable they were alive. They were over the top, but they were alive, and I could. I just felt the world. And even every, and that goes to the other characters in that movie. I felt it, as cheesy as it was. I was like, Sir Patrick Stewart was great. All these people, like even the the as cheesy as the Shield fight was, and and all this other stuff. I felt like this movie was alive. I felt this movie had character. I felt this movie had passion. I I thought that everybody was. Just really bringing it. It was not perfect. And by today's standards, you know, and you know the way it looks and the way it sounds and all that stuff, it's dated and it is over the top. But it felt alive and I, I loved it. And, and it had a lot of the great beats in a two and a half hour movie. I right? had about two and a half hours. It really did a pretty decent job at giving a version of Dune that is also very much a David Lynch film. I loved the giant worms. I thought it was, seeing it all for the first time, I just really liked it. And even though Kyle MacLachlan does, I was never sold on him as the age that Paul should be, I really liked Kyle MacLachlan in that movie. And so, but but there were, it wasn't great. And there, there were parts that were just like, oh my gosh, and sometimes I'd be laughing and, but I was enjoying it, and I was entertained. I was engaged by this movie. But again, like I said, it was... But it was also, you know, there was part of me that was mystery science theater in it in my head, laughing at it like that a little bit. But again, I was entertained. Big, big important word there for this, what we're talking about here. So finally, Dune comes out on HBO Max. And I had every intention... Of seeing it at the theater, I was gonna to go to the IMAX, but for, you know, it was there. It was early. It showed up early, All right? And I'm like, well, I don't have tickets, and I really want to see it. And I've got a 70 plus inch TV behind me that's 4K. Why not watch it? So I got my that sub back, and we watched Dune together. And this is what I think of it. I, there's not much I can say that other people haven't said. 
This movie looks amazing. It is Dune. The world. The world of Dune is here. Arrakis is fully come to life in the way that David Lynch couldn't do. Couldn't. Didn't mean he, you know, he did just, they weren't the capabilities. I'm sure that if he could, he would have. Right? He would have made it look as good as possible. And this is doing it the same thing. It is making this look as good as possible. And the sound design and the score. Oh, bigger than life. You feel like you're in a big sci-fi epic movie. Get ready for Dune and all oh, its intrigue. Ladies and gentlemen, they are going to bring it home. They are going to do it. We've got this incredible cast. Everybody, every 14-year-old, I don't know. I don't know what the age group of people that like Timothy Chalamet it likes, but he's he's got his fans, right? <laughs> I personally, I've ne I didn't, I've never really gotten it, and maybe that's just because he's another guy, and we've got that kind of thing where we're like, fuck that guy. Try not to swear as much in my videos, but there we go. Um, but I I I I I really liked him in this. I thought that he fit. I I mean. I, I thought he was all right. He's the right age. Oscar Isaac's in this. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson, Josh Brolin, Zendaya. Why can't I remember uh, the other... <laughs> this guy. Why can't I remember his name all of a sudden? I'm, gonna, I'm embarrassed. Javier Bardem. Come on, Rob. Dave Bautista is in this. Jason Momoa. Stellan Skarsgård. David Dastmalchian, from who was in The Dark Knight, but was Polka Dot Man in Suicide Squad. And I loved the Polka Dot Man in that movie. Uh, Stephen McKinney. Charlotte Rampling. Chang Chen. All these people. Benjamin Clementine. Gloria Obiano. Babs Olasun. Mo Mo I can't do it. Sorry, Babs, I could say your first name, but I can't. I don't want to butcher the other name. But a ton of people, great people. I mean, this is a a who's who. You've got Mary Jane, you've got Thanos, you've got Aquaman, you've got Poe, you've got like a who's who of Marvel and Star Wars and Pirates of the Caribbean, and just you got all these big epic stars from your best franchises in this movie. How could it go wrong? How could it go wrong at all, man? How? How? Because it has a good chunk of the story. It's there. It's what's on the page. A lot of it is what's on the page. Yeah, they they uh, gender swapped uh, the planetologist. I didn't care. I didn't care. It was like, okay, things are things are happening. Just like in the original David Lynch film. All the plot points are there. The characters are all there. So why was I feeling... Empty and unengaged and unentertained with this big epic thing to look at where I should be on the edge of my seat. Well, it definitely it wasn't the fact that I was seeing what was on the page before me. I'd been dream I wanted to see what was on the page. I wanted to see if they could interpret things the same or better than the Lynch version. How much were we going to get more? This is just part one. Where are they going to end it? How, you know, like, so why am I feeling just so dissatisfied? And it's very, very simple. And I don't think enough people have talked about it. I actually talked about it on my Twitch channel the same night, the night that we watched it before. Uh, I, I'm saying this because uh, somebody I really like, Brad Jones, did a review like the next day. And I swear to God, it was like he copied word for word. He didn't. But we were out of the same mind about this movie. It was crazy how, like, if you go to my Twitch channel, RF Stone, and you look up, uh, there's like a Lego Batman <laughs> stream that we did. It was just a just chat, right? And it was just me doing a review for Dune. And I said just before he did it, he probably recorded it. We probably, maybe we recorded it at the same time. Maybe some solar flare connected our minds over the time and space and we said almost the exact same thing the problem with dune is the characters is the and is the writing of the characters 
and what they were told to do to perform those roles. And it's not surprising to me that I feel this way because I feel like looking back now on other Denis Villeneuve, if I'm, I can't, again, I butcher that name every time. Every one of his projects, I feel like his characters uh, a lot of times are understated. There's not a lot of over-the-top performances to me. I feel like a lot of people are, are playing it down. And maybe they did that on purpose to balance out the over-the-topness of the original Dune. I don't know, but it felt like a trend, though, for his movies was to kind of be like this and that's fine that's fine if this is because this is his interpretation right so if he wants to bring that style that he's carried over from other movies that's just following his trend but the problem for me was it made these characters feel lifeless just i, I you have rebecca ferguson in your movie who again i can't if you haven't read the book read the book man it's not that long it took us you know i i did it while i was on my work breaks and I, it took me a few weeks but i mean if you if you're one of those people you can just sit down and read anywhere you can get done with dune in like a couple of days and uh you tell me that jessica is not one of the most bad ass characters in all of sci-fi at least and i felt like that just like in the David Lynch's original movie, I felt like this just, they gave her, like they removed all of it. One of the best things about David Lynch's film was that was he did keep in the narration. I kind of didn't mention that before, right? They left the internal narration of the characters, which is all over the book, so that you understood the motivations of so many people without it. It doesn't. It never spoiled anything in the story. I never felt. Like, oh, you're, you're telling me too much. No, I liked understanding the characters' motivations. I liked being in the heads of the characters. And them thinking all these things. And while some of these characters don't communicate well to each other, at least the audience is in on it. So that narration is gone. So that leaves out, left out a huge thing that I thought the David Lynch movie just did way better, which was develop the internal like what you felt from the characters on top of that when you have everybody play it down what felt like played way down i'm not saying that there weren't moments that the characters felt a little alive but it just felt like everybody was just it was just there was a tone that just felt like all, they were washed out like the mood like you could say that the grays and the blues and whatever and the dust of the of the planet was like affecting the, the personalities of the characters or something but no it just felt like all the fire that's in the book, everything that I felt from these characters, how alive it felt, and how alive the characters felt in Lynch's film, where it wasn't as good a movie, but the characters felt alive, the characters were entertaining. I remember the villains. The villains in this? How do you make Dave Batista boring? Yeah, he's that guy from the book, but how do you make that character who should be interesting, who should feel alive and menacing and everything, and Stellan Skarsgård's Baron, how do you make this guy who in Lynch's film is so disgusting that he's burned into my memory, the, the, the vileness of this man is burned into my memory, I felt nothing for the villains, I felt nothing for the heroes, and... If it hadn't been that I had already read the book, I'd have been like completely disappointed because at least I have the book to fall back on and in the end, I have the Lynch movie to fall back on. I can't believe that I was more entertained by Lynch's film than this one. That's just opposite. So it doesn't matter if you have big, epic-looking films and sounds good and you got all, the, the world is there. If you don't have interesting characters to occupy it, then what the heck? Now, if you don't care about that, maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you're all about spectacle over substance, you know, style over substance. That's great. I'm glad for you. I wish I could think like that, where I could just turn that off. But for this, I couldn't. The characters are very important to me, and I had only just read the book. I wasn't living with this for 30, 40, 50 years. 
I was that invested after only a month into this book, and then to see Lynch's movie and this compared side by side, I just, I can't believe that I'd rather watch Lynch's version, as cheesy as it is, as over the top as it is, because at least it's entertaining. And while I'll remember moments from this movie, I every time I think about going back to it, I go, eh, why? Why do that again? And now we have part two coming out, and I'll watch it. But I won't have that same excitement anymore because you let me down in the first part. All you can either do is is somehow raise my expect, you know, like have lowered expectations and then meet them or somehow beat that or it's going to be more of the same. I don't feel like it's going to change much. And that's the director's prerogative. He he want, he can direct it any way he wants. He can tell these characters to do whatever they want. And the screenplay can say to do this and play this, whatever they want. But for me, I can't believe I'm saying that I'd rather watch the Lynch movie or read a book. If you had told me this, that this is how I was going to feel a year ago before this movie was put out and, and, and pushed back, I'd have told you you're full of it. Because I don't come here... This is with a, a, a very heavy feeling of like, I hate that I feel this way. I wish that I could just turn that part of me off and go, eh... And maybe later down the years, you know, in the over the course of the years, I'll lighten up about it a little bit. But since this is fresh, still, Dune, come on, man. You gotta have vibrant characters. You gotta have characters that you remember. And I, they just didn't have it. And that's not to say it's a bad movie. Because it's not. It's not a bad movie. Technically, and all these other aspects that make good movies, this is a good movie. I just wasn't entertained by it, and the characters just really fell f so flat for me that I can't, I can't give it some great super rating. I, it falls because of that. It falls down to like a B minus, and I, I, I just can't believe I'm saying that, but it's true. And you know, we try to be as honest as possible on this channel. So, if you liked this review, <laughs> please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, and the bell for all notifications. But if you hated every single thing I said and you go, I don't know what you're talking about. These characters were more alive than this review. Well, we got a cure for that. We can give you a better memory. So if you just give me a second to get the time right on here, we can give you the last 20-ish minutes of your life back and give you a better memory. So those of you who did like this, please put on shades or look away. If you have a sensitivity to light, please don't look right here as we give these people who hated this a better memory. This should at least be more entertaining for those that didn't like this than what I just said. Have a great day, everybody. See you later. I will kill!